and wait till this truck goes by. We'll let the dogs go by. Let's wait, there's a bunch of cars coming. Wait, are you turning? Or are you going straight? He's going straight. So living downtown on the peninsula definitely has its allure from the convenience to the beauty to the history. But there's a lot of things that people don't realize about moving down here. And today we're gonna to talk about those things. Now I don't wanna really talk about the cons, the, the negatives, because I don't think these are pure negatives. I think they're just things you need to be aware of that we're gonna talk about today. And let me know down in the comments as I'm going through them, is it a con for you or is it just something that you should be concerned or aware of if you're moving here? Now the first thing I wanna talk about is the cost. Now, I think it's no surprise to anyone that the cost of living in on the peninsula is higher than most places in Charleston. And what I don't want to talk about is the cost of the housing because that there, that is the given. What I want to talk about is the other costs associated with living here. And what a lot of people don't realize, especially further down, like where we are in South of Broad, homes can be over 200 years old. So you have to factor in your maintenance on those homes. It is not cheap to get a contractor in who is familiar with these homes that can preserve them how they need to be preserved. And then on top of doing these repairs, one thing you also need to check is to make sure that there is no easement placed on the home. Now there's two entities that can place easements on home. There's the Preservation Society and the Historic Charleston Foundation. Now they can place easements on anything from the exterior to the interior to the grounds of the home. Now what this means is that you know you need to preserve the materials and the history of that home which greatly limits what you can do. Now, if there is an easement on the interior, most of the time they're placed on the primary rooms, but just know that that usually excludes kitchens and bathrooms, so you're not cooking over a wood-burning fireplace or you have to use a 200-year-old toilet. You know, another thing that people don't really consider when they live down here is that you may not have as much privacy as you think. I mean, we're in front of this house filming right now and it's not uncommon for either tourists or locals to want to take pictures of these beautiful homes for their social media just for a couple of likes on instagram and uh, now shameless plug you know if you're watching this video uh, please like this and subscribe to my channel uh, because we are in front of someone's house so if you like this house just like this video here now along the lines of the tourist, you know, downtown is such a tourist hotspot. There are a few other things that you do need to consider. Um, they have to do with traffic and driving, um, but it's not all the tourist driving. Now the tourist driving are, they're pretty bad. Um, I was one at one point, I once heard the term um, broken neck drivers because they're constantly looking around trying to see the sights they don't know where they're going with all the one-way streets around here and they tend to go a lot slower and back up the traffic but again it's not just when they're driving i mean just getting down here today there were many times where people i don't even know if they were tourists or locals they just weren't looking they walked across the crosswalk when i didn't have a stop sign i had to slam on my brakes so that i didn't run them over and just be careful when you're driving or walking downtown because that is something to be concerned and considerate of are the other people. And then there's also the hotly debated topic of horse-drawn carriages, which we're not gonna get into that debate right now. If you wanna debate that, we can go down in the comments. However, they are extremely slow. They try and move out of the way of traffic to let you by, but they're not really paying attention too much either. So if you get stuck behind one of those carriages, you can expect to be late to wherever you're going and be careful because those horses leave down some surprises that you don't want to run over because you're going to be smelling that for a while. Along the lines of the traffic and the cars, you know, another thing to be aware of is the parking downtown. It is very finite. Now, while a lot of the million, multi-million dollar homes do have off-street parking, a lot of the smaller ones or condos do not. You would have to pay for parking in a garage or get your permit to park on the street. Now, the permits are by different areas of town and 
there are 8,000 of them given out every year. So just be aware that even if you have that parking permit, if you're coming home with your groceries, you may have to park a block or two away and carry your stuff home. But before we get into our last item to be concerned about, make sure you stick around. I've got some tips and tricks for living downtown right after this. And our last thing is probably the thing I get questioned about the most, and that is flooding. Now, yes, downtown floods more than any other area in Charleston. We are the low country. It is the lowest area. When downtown was built, the drain pipes were very small and it is nearly impossible from what I've been told to retrofit those. They're doing what they can to curb the flooding, um, but it is something to be aware of. Now, most of the homes do not get water in them because of how they were built. So it can just be a big inconvenience waiting for that water to drain if you've got to leave the house. Now, this can happen in certain areas just at high tide, but mostly when there is a storm coming in. Now you may, if you Google anything about flooding in Charleston, I guarantee some of the first things you're gonna see are people kayaking or wading through the water or floating on rafts down it. I, I need to tell you, please do not do this. While you may think it is only storm water, you have to remember this water comes from the sewers. So anytime I see someone floating down the water, after a storm, it kind of makes me sick to my stomach thinking about where this water comes from. So here are some tips if you still want to live downtown um, that can greatly help you with your quality of life. Um, the first one is remember that the further north you get on the peninsula, the less traffic and tourists through the residential neighborhoods you're going to have. And it's also gonna become a little more cost effective to live up there. So, you know, if you don't have the money or you don't wanna live down here south of Broad or the French Quarter, you know, some areas to look at are Wagner Terrace, Hampton Park Terrace, North Morrison, West Side. Um, your, your dollar's gonna stretch a lot further. You're still gonna be very convenient to everything, but you're not gonna have as many tourists and traffic that go along with that. And our second tip is if you wanna curb a lot of the traffic, there are a lot of people that do have golf carts or other electric modes of transportation, um, whether it be a bike, scooter. Me personally, I have a one wheel. And now I do wanna let you know if you do get a golf cart, cause they are extremely popular, make sure you look up the rules and regulations on those. There are a ton of them. We're not gonna get into it in this video. So if you just do a Google search, you can find all of that with the registration and the seat belts and the mirrors and everything to make sure you don't get a ticket. Uh, but when it comes to driving around and parking, if you've got a legal golf cart, it's actually a lot easier because you're a lot smaller. And lastly, the biggest piece of advice I can give you about living downtown is just to enjoy where you live. Yes, it comes with all of these, do we call them cons or are they just side effects? But just remember, if the tourists are here when they're done, they have to go home. You're already home. So just embrace it, embrace the home, embrace the area, and just remember that you get to live in the number one city in the United States. So what do you think? Are these cons or are they just those side effects? You know, which ones can you live with? Which ones are deal breakers? Let me know down in the comments on those. And as always, if you're looking to buy or sell a home anywhere in the greater Charleston area, we would love to be your realtor of choice. Again, my name is Bill Olson, your favorite YouTubing Charleston realtor. I've got all my contact information below or you can shoot an email to info at livinginchs.com. I've got a video right here that I really think you're gonna love. So I will see you over there. Have a great day.